far we can get. period from the start of one heartbeat to the start of the next heartbeat. Okay, so essentially it's one full cycle. Um, when we look at this cardiac cycle again, we said that each chamber contracts and we said the atria contract together and then the ventricles contract together. Now when we say contract and relax, we're going to assign some technical terms or some anatomical terms to that. So we're going to assign systole and diastole. Okay, each of the chambers is going to go through both phases, systole and diastole. Um, systole is when the chamber is contracting, diastole is when it's relaxing. Okay, so the atria go through systole, diastole. Then the ventricles go through systole, diastole. We're gonna walk through the whole process, um, like kind of with these little pictures so we can visualize it. And then I have a couple slides where we add some terms and some values and stuff on there, okay? So here's where we're starting. Again, we're talking about um, one full cardiac cycle. Okay, so one heartbeat where your heart fills with blood and pumps that blood out. At the beginning, um, the atria are going to contract first, right? So that's atrial systole, okay? Atrial systole, you see what the atria are doing right here? And notice if you look out here at the same time, the ventricles are relaxed, they're in diastole. <laughs> Right? So when the ventricles contract, I mean when the atria contract, obviously the ventricles want to be relaxed to accept that blood. So we start with the atrial systole, which is atrial contraction, and that forces the last bit of blood down to the ventricles. Remember, they fill passively to about 70%. Um, but that last like 30% of blood gets squeezed down into the ventricles during atrial systole. Next, atrial systole ends. And atrial diastole begins. What's atrial diastole? Relaxation. Okay, so the atria have squeezed the last bit of blood down to the ventricles and then they relax. And if you look over here, look at the atria, atrial systole, and then look at their diastole. They spend a lot of time relaxed. Okay, so after they contract, the rest of the time they're just going to be sitting relaxed passively, filling up the blood. So, <clears throat> while the atria are relaxed, okay, the ventricles are gonna contract now, right? The ventricles have been completely filled up with blood and they need to go into systole. They need to contract. They do this in two phases, okay? There are two different phases. Um, first phase and then second phase. During the first phase of ventricular systole or contraction, um, the ventricles start to squeeze and when they start to create pressure, they're going to push these AV valves closed. Okay, so that's what happens in early phase. They're not actually ejecting blood yet. If you notice here, like the blood hasn't actually left yet. During early phase, they start to contract and it's enough pressure to snap those AV valves shut. Okay, so at that point, everything is shut, right? All four of the valves are closed. During the second phase or late phase of ventricular systole, what's systole again? Contraction. contraction. So when the ventricles are contracting, at first they contract and it's just enough pressure to shut these AV valves so the blood doesn't go backwards into the atria. During the late phase or the second phase, they've created enough pressure that they can open these semilunar valves. Okay, because there was some amount of pressure over here in the arteries, right? There's some pressure holding those valves closed. So the ventricles had to generate enough force to open those doors against that, that pressure in the artery. Okay, so during the late phase, they have had enough pressure to open these semilunar valves and actually eject blood from the heart. Okay, so during the late phase, semilunar valves open, blood is ejected. So, our ventricles have contracted. What are the ventricles gonna do after they contract? They're gonna relax, okay? And what do we call that? Ventricular 
diastole. That also happens in two phases. Okay, so both of the ventricular um, stages happen in two different phases. So in the first phase or in the early phase, as the ventricles start to relax and the pressure drops, the semilunar valve snaps shut. Okay, so again, we'll have all four valves shut. It keeps relaxing, the pressure keeps dropping, and then eventually, oops, let's go to the next one. Here's the late phase. Um, eventually, the pressure down here in the ventricles gets even lower than the pressure up here in the atria. Okay, at that point, that's gonna open these AV valves. So now the blood can passively flow into the atria, down to the ventricles, and that brings us to the very beginning again. Okay, the AV valves are open, the blood's flowing in, and it's flowing down. Then what's the first phase that we're gonna have happen up here in the atria? <coughs> Atrial systole, which means they do what? Contract, to push the last bit of blood down to the ventricles. Then what happens to the atria? They relax, what we, we call that what? Diastole. Then it's the ventricles turn to contract. Um, ventricular systole happens in two phases, right? The first phase, when the ventricles first start to contract, what does it do? Good job. It closes those AV valves. Now all four valves are closed. In the late phase of ventricular systole, it's enough pressure to open the semilunars and it's able to eject blood from the heart. After the ventricles go through systole, they go into what? Diastole, which means what? Relaxation, that also happens in two phases. Okay, they start to relax and these semilunar snap shut. All four valves are closed. They continue to relax and then eventually the, a the pressure up here is higher than the pressure down here and the AV valves open and then we're sitting right back at the start. Okay, we're gonna add a few more kind of details. So um, the pressure in a chamber, the pressure of the blood is gonna control where it goes, right? That's gonna control blood flow. Um, the pressure in any chamber rises during systole. What systole? Contraction. Contraction, right? That makes sense. Remember pressure and volume vary inversely, right? Opposite. So if you decrease volume, you increase pressure. Makes sense. When you're squeezing it, you increase the pressure. Um, the opposite's also true. The pressure falls during diastole, which is when it relaxes, right? Relaxation, because you're making the volume bigger. When you make the volume bigger, the pressure goes down. They vary oppositely. Um, we see that the changes in pressure help to control blood flow, because obviously the blood is gonna flow from high pressure to low pressure, right? That makes sense. If I have a big water balloon here, Right? The water inside the balloon is under high pressure because the elastic's squeezing it. If I let go of it, where's the water gonna go? Out, right? It's not gonna just chill in the balloon. If I give it a way out, it's gonna go out because it's under high pressure there. Okay, so your blood is gonna go from the high pressure areas to the low pressure areas. We control that um, by the timing and direction of our contractions, right? When the atria contract, we're gonna want the blood to get out of the ventricles. When the ventricles contract, that's gonna allow the blood to eject out of the heart. And then we also utilize our one-way valves, right, to make sure that it's not going backwards at any given time. Again, we're gonna talk through this again, so it should be very familiar, but we'll just add a few details now. So phases of the cardiac cycle. Um, initially, we have atrial systole. What does that mean? Where is the blood going? Down to the ventricles. Then we have atrial diastole. What does that mean? Relaxation, what happens to the pressure when it relaxes? Goes down, good. Um, then the, it's the ventricles turn, right? We have ventri ventricular systole, what does that mean? Contraction, what happens to the pressure when we contract? Goes up. This happens in two phases, first phase and second phase, right? During the first phase, remember we just snap the AV valve shut. During the second phase, we actually eject blood. Then we have ventricular diastole, which is what? Relaxation, what happens to the pressure? Goes down. Again, we have two phases. Early phase is when the semilunar snaps shut. 
Late phase is when the AV is open and the blood actually goes down. So, we're gonna talk through. <laughs> Remember, before atrial systole, like at the very beginning, um, blood is flowing into the atria. The AV valves are open, so it's flowing down to the ventricles. Right, the whole heart's relaxed, everything's in diastole, and the blood is just getting returned to the heart. Okay, it's going in the atria, down to the ventricles. Um, and again, I've said this a few times, where the ventricles fill um, about 70% of volume passively like this, which is why you can live with AFib, right? Why you can live when your atria aren't working because your ventricles are gonna get a large volume of blood anyways. Okay, um, the semilunar valves are shut. When we start, why? because we don't want the blood to go back to the heart from the arteries into the ventricles, right? So we start with atrial systole, which is when the atria contract. Okay, um, the right and left AV valves are open, why? The blood's supposed to be going that way, right? The blood's supposed to be going from the atria down to the ventricles. Um, the atrial contraction gets that last little bit of blood down to the ventricles, and at that point in time, the ventricles contain the maximum amount of blood that they're gonna have during that cardiac cycle. Okay, the atria have just squeezed the last bit of blood down there and the ventricles are filled up. They're not gonna get any more during that cardiac cycle. At that point in time, we say that the ventricles have their end diastolic volume. Again, end diastolic volume is like the max volume. They're filled up. End diastolic is like end of relaxation, right? At the very end of their relaxation, they're filled up to their maximum volume, that's the EDV. Um, at that point, the atria stop contracting, right? Systole ends and diastole begins. So the atria can relax and they're gonna stay relaxed um, until the next cardiac cycle begins. So EDV is max volume, right? End diastolic volume is maximum volume. the atria contract, the ventricles contract. And we said that this happens in two phases, right? We've got early systole and late systole. During early systole, remember the ventricles start to contract and they start to build pressure, but they're not actually ejecting blood yet. Yes. For the ventricles. But not not the atria, yeah, yeah, all based on the ventricles, exactly, good question. Um, <clears throat> so in the beginning, the ventricles start to contract and build pressure, okay, and when, that, when they start to build pressure, it's not enough to eject blood from the heart yet, but it's enough to go up and push those AV valves shut, right, because we don't want the blood to go backwards up into the atria. So we close the AV valves. Remember, the semilunar valves were already closed. So at this point, all the valves are shut. All of the valves are closed. But the ventricles keep relaxing, right? I'm sorry, they keep contracting, right? The ventricles keep contracting. They keep going to systole. They keep building pressure. We call this isovolumetric contraction. Iso means the same. So this is literally saying same volume measure contraction. So during this period of time, the ventricles contract to build pressure, so to increase pressure, but there's no change in volume. Because remember, all valves are closed. Okay, so it's an isovolumetric contraction. It's contracting, it's building pressure, but all the valves are shut. We haven't opened the semilunars yet. We're not ejecting any blood, so the volume is staying the same. During the late um, phase of ventricular systole, that's when we actually can open those semilunar valves and eject blood. Okay, that's when the actual action is happening. Um, the pressure in the ventricles gets higher than the pressure in the vessels. Right, because remember, you have your heart like this, and you'll have like this big vessel leading out of the ventricle. And at the bottom of it, you'll have a semilunar valve. 
there's pressure that exists here in this vessel. There's pressure that's pushing that valve closed. So you have to build pressure and build pressure and build pressure. And once the pressure is greater in the ventricle pushing up, then you can push past that and open up the semilunar valve. Right, just picture like if you had a door and both people are pushing on it, right? To try and make it go one way or the other. Whoever's pushing the hardest is gonna win that war. Okay, so you're pushing on either side of the valve and you're not gonna open that semilunar valve until the ventricle generates enough pressure to overcome the pressure in the artery that's leading away. That happens during the late phase of ventricular systole. Okay, so we open the semilunars and then we're able to actually pump blood out of the ventricle. The volume of blood that we eject is called the stroke volume. Okay, like the amount in one stroke and one push. That's the stroke volume. Okay. We don't eject all the blood from the ventricles. Okay, the amount, the volume of blood that you eject from your ventricle at rest, like a nice calm steady state, is typically only like 60% of your end diastolic volume. Okay, so if your end diastolic, I'm just making up numbers make this easy, but if your end diastolic volume was 100 milliliters, then your stroke volume would probably be about 60 milliliters. So you leave some blood in those ventricles. Um, and the reason for that is sometimes you have to adjust, right? That's when you're sitting here not doing much. So if you start running, you're gonna to need to up that, right? You're gonna to wanna to eject more blood out of the heart because you need an increased, um, what we call cardiac output. But at rest, you're not ejecting everything from your ventricles. All right, so the atria went through systole and diastole. The ventricles went through systole, right? They contracted. Um, and then at the end of ventricular systole, we're going to enter diastole, right? Or we're about to enter diastole. When the, ventri when the ventricles start to relax um, and the pressure in the ventricles falls below the pressure in the arteries, remember the blood's going to try and flow backwards, right? And we don't want that to happen. So the semilunar valves are going to snap shut. When the semilunar valves close, now all the valves are closed again. Okay, at that point in time, we say that the ventricles have their end systolic volume. Uh, if we said that the end diastolic volume was the max volume, then you could say that the end systolic volume was the minimum volume. Okay, they've ejected their stroke volume, right? They've ejected however much they're going to eject, and that's it. They have whatever volume is left at the end of systole. At the end of their contraction, they have something left over. That's their end systolic volume. Um, again, this varies greatly depending on the patient and what's happening, um, but this is typically about 40% of end diastolic volume, which end diastolic volume we said was max, right? So end diastolic volume is like 100% of volume. That's everything, that's the maximum we put in there. Um, and end diastolic volume, Minus stroke volume gives us an systolic volume. So you can do this many different ways, or I could say um, end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume equals stroke volume. Okay, the maximum amount of volume I had minus however much I pump out is gonna give me the little bit that's left over. Okay, or I could say um, the maximum amount that I have minus whatever's left at the end gives me how much I pumped out. Okay, so end diastolic volume is the maximum volume. At the end of ventricular diastole or relaxation when it's filled up, how much does it have? And systolic volume is after the ventricle contracts, after systole. It's squeezed, it's ejected everything that it's gonna eject, the semilunar valve snaps shut, and that's all it's leaving. Okay, so whatever's left over in the ventricle is the end systolic volume, the minimum number, whatever's left. And the amount that got pumped out is the stroke volume. Okay, so um, we're talking about 
ventricular diastole, right, when the ventricles are relaxing. And again, we said that this happens in two phases, just like systole did. In the first phase, our early diastole, remember we just said that um, the semilunar valves close so blood doesn't go backwards into the ventricles. Right, because the pressure starts to drop in the ventricles and then we don't want the blood to go backwards from the arteries down to the ventricles, so we fill up those little cups, right, that you saw when we dissected the heart, that snaps the semilunar shut. So now all the heart valves are closed. We have passive atrial filling, which means the atria are open, relaxed, blood's just flowing into them, a nice, normal, passively. At this point, the ventricular pressure is higher than the atrial pressure. Okay, which is why the AV valves are closed. Okay, because there's still more pressure in the ventricles. The ventricles keep relaxing though, right? They're relaxing, they're relaxing, they're relaxing. What's happening to the pressure as they relax? It's lowering, right? The pressure's going down and down and down and down and down. We call that isovolumetric relaxation. What did we say iso means? Same. same, same volume measure. So the ventricles relax to decrease pressure, but the volume remains constant. Why is the volume not changing? All the valves are closed, right? No blood's coming in, no blood's going out. So during early ventricular diastole, we have this isovolumetric relaxation. Then during late ventricular diastole, the ventricles have relaxed so much and the pressure has gone down so low that now there's more pressure in the atria. So that's gonna open up our AV valves and now blood can passively flow down from the atria to the ventricles. Brings us back to the start. What's up? So isovolumetric relaxation first has to do with the ESC, right? So whatever's remaining from during, yes. Not injected, like the stuff that wasn't injected. The volume during isometric um, relaxation will be the end, the end systolic volume, yes, okay. the ESV. And the opposite would be true. So the volume during, um, um, during isovolumetric contraction would be EDV, right, the max volume. Okay. Let's just finish this slide and then I'll be super happy with where we're at. Okay, so obviously when our heart beats, it produces sounds, right? You guys have all probably heard a heartbeat before. Um, when you go to the doctor, they use a stethoscope to listen to your heart. Um, and that that you hear uh, correlates to specific events that are going on in your heart. Sound one, um, which we call S1, and sound two we call S2. Or you'll hear lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, because somebody's all bad when it sounded like. Um, but sound one and sound two. So sound one and sound two are loud sounds that you clearly and obviously hear when you're listening to the heart. Um, S1 is produced when the AV valves close. Okay, so those atrioventricular valves snapping shut is that first sound that you're gonna hear. When does that happen? During ventricular, good. During ventricular systole, which is what? Contraction, right? During the first phase of ventricular systole, pressure starts to rise and we snap the AV valve shut. S2, um, the second sound or sound two is produced by the semilunar valves closing. When do the semilunar valves close? During ventricular, during ventricular diastole, which means what? Relaxation. Okay, so those sounds that you're hearing when you listen to the heartbeat, those are corresponding to ventricular activities. Okay, so the ventricles contract, the AVs snap shut. The ventricles relax, the semilunar snap shut. That's what you hear. 
Um, S3 and 4 are soft sounds that you shouldn't be able to hear. And these are just because of blood flowing in and then um, like kind of rushing through the chambers and when it's kind of passively filling and then atrial contraction. But what you hear is because of the valves closing. Um, a heart murmur is an abnormal sound that you might hear when oscillating or listening to the heart. So a heart murmur happens when the valves don't close properly. Okay, and this can happen for lots of different reasons. It can be congenital, so you can be born with your valves um, not the exact correct shape. Um, it can be post an infection. There are some infections that happen to um, cause damage to the heart, like rheumatic fever, um, endocarditis. So that's really common, especially in IV drug use. Um, endocarditis can occur and that can affect the valves. Um, lots of different things can affect the valves. But if the valves don't close perfectly, then they're not a perfect seal. And the blood can get regurgitated and it'll kind of like gurgle up into the, um, like from the ventricles up into the atria. Uh, and that creates a heart murmur or something that you can actually hear when you listen to the heart. Uh, okay guys, so we'll finish this on Tuesday.